welcome to the morning session namaste bhaiya namaste everyone so here is the assignment that we took yesterday observe how your feeling keeps changing for different people throughout the course of the day for instance when your mother says something you accept it but when the same thing is said by your mother in law you may notice resistance in yourself this may be happening with several different people is there something you have assumed in these situations that may not be true also note how you how have how you have one kind of feeling for an uh, an individual at one time and perhaps a different kind of feeling for the same person at another time for example when you are feeling fresh in the morning as opposed to when you are hungry or tired at the end of the day there may be many such instances throughout the day observe these and check your assumptions about yourself the other the situation etc and note down your observation so we are trying to observe the feeling trying to observe uh, whether it is naturally acceptable to us or not trying to observe the present state trying to observe who is making the decision for the feeling and also trying to observe the understanding or assumption underlying the feeling so in exercise 1 we are trying to observe ourselves closely as a pure observer so in step 1 we try to observe the imagination in particular the feeling as it is without any evaluation without any judgment without any reaction just as it is it was a very simple but still very important step and we have to keep on doing it you see that sometimes the intensity to observe the feeling goes up sometimes the intensity comes down sometimes i am more up <clears throat> more observant about myself sometimes i am simply carried away by my thoughts so in the course of a day you see all these fluctuations taking place sometimes even i am not aware of my imagination i am just expressing something without ever being able to see what is going on inside so i have to sharpen my observation the exercise one is basically the consciousness observing the consciousness the self observing the self and we have started this by observing the imagination and in the process we are also able to make out the desire thought and expectation in the self so we could see that the feelings drive my thoughts the thoughts drive my expectations and then my behavior and work and participation takes place outside so this feeling is very important all my happiness or unhappiness is related to my feeling inside try to make out your feeling every moment i have observed that when you wake up early in the morning and at that time when you try to observe you can see your feeling more clearly but as you start taking care of the body as you get involved with the household chores as you get involved with the daily the activities then maybe the sharpness may come down so that is possible so try to observe it as sharply as possible and we also said that take out some time during the day at regular intervals and try to observe yourself so one thing that we had proposed was to observe the imagination every 4 hours say for 10 to 15 minutes and this is something that you can do you know while you are taking rest while you are free from some work while you are traveling you know while whatever you do not have any particular commitment outside then you can just try to observe even when you have some serious commitment and you are going to get involved with it but without before getting involved <clears throat> you can just observe your feeling with what feeling am i doing this we'll see that after some time i am able to see my feeling clearly and i can be able to even transform my feeling i can see that yes now see this kind of feeling is getting develop in me and this is certainly not acceptable to me naturally so let me have you know, a feeling which is naturally acceptable to me this kind of decision you may make so you'll see that the situation outside may be bad but within yourself by being little observant about yourself you are able to transform your feeling and you are also able to be comfortable in that state or situation so nice so, so in step 1 we try to observe the imagination in particular the feeling without any evaluation 
in step two, we started evaluating the feeling and we tried to find out whether it is naturally acceptable or not. In the process, I'm also able to be aware of my natural acceptance. We can see that if I'm trying to evaluate my feeling, I can very clearly make out whether it is naturally acceptable or not. But when I'm caught up in my thoughts and I try to evaluate my thoughts at the level of natural acceptance, it is not very clear, isn't it? And the same thing happens at the level of expectation. In step three, we try to observe the state of being, whether I'm comfortable inside or not, whether I'm in harmony inside or not, whether I'm happy or not. Many times you'll feel that <clears throat> you are able to observe whether you are comfortable or not uh, to start with, and then you are gradually able to make out the feeling. This may also happen. Sometimes you may feel that I'm not comfortable. What is happening? What is the reason behind this? And then you try to recollect and you are able to make out some incident that took place yesterday and try to look into the whole thing. And then you can make out what the feeling was there inside me. Another common mistake is that we overlook certain things. This is a very common mistake. And that is because we assume that I have to observe my feeling on certain instance in particular situations. For example, when we are sharing also, we mentioned some incident that took place the day before the study or study. And we try to elaborate upon it. And it may be the case that I missed out observing my feeling before that and after that. So we might feel that I have to observe myself on some particular occasions when I'm getting irritated or angry or when I'm you know, somewhat uh, maybe not behaving rightly with the other and then I try to make out. But this is not the case. You need to be observing yourself every moment and you will find that these instances which I was overlooking are very important. I may accept for myself that I am used to this. Right? I am used to this. I generally think like this. I generally feel like this. And we do not evaluate it. So when you go to evaluate, then you may also make it a point that I might have missed evaluation on so many instances. So that will further enrich your step one, that how could I miss observing my feeling in that particular situation or in general. Even when I'm lying down, I'm sitting in my chair, okay, I'm on a call, whatever, I may still keep on observing my feeling. So this overlooking you know, my feeling uh, many times in general is a common kind of mistake. So I don't have to overlook. I have to you know, ensure that nothing gets missed out. I do not have to even accept that, yes, I am like this only. No, I have to make it out. What is there inside me which makes me like this? Is that fine? In step four, we try to observe who is deciding the feeling inside me. And you could see that I am the one who is deciding the feeling. And you could also see that I am 100% responsible for my happiness or unhappiness. And thus, when I am able to make out that I am responsible 100% for my happiness or unhappiness, and I basically want to be happy in continuity, then it certainly means that I have to work upon myself. I cannot just let it be because I want to be happy every moment and I'm only responsible for this. Earlier, I might be blaming others for my unhappiness, right? But now I'm able to see that it is me who is making me unhappy. I am deciding the feeling. So I become more responsible towards myself. Second thing is that I get rid of grudges and complaints about others. So generally, whenever I observe my imagination, I may be reminded of a particular set of people you know, whom I feel have been disturbing me, making me unhappy. And then I have so many complaints and grudges. If this person had not done this, then I would not have been happy. My life would not have been miserable and things like that. But now that I'm able to see that the other person did something, the situation was of a particular kind, but ultimately it was me who felt like that. I could have a different kind of feeling also. In place of getting angry, I might have pity also on the other person. In place of getting reactive, I could be responsible in that situation, isn't it? And then I can also make out that in the same situation, when the other was committing a mistake due to lack of my competence, I also committed some mistakes. If I had not done that, 
then the kind of situation might not have spoiled. So many times when we try to recollect also, we start blaming others. But now that I become more and more clear about my feeling, then this blaming stops. I'm able to see that ultimately it is me who decided the feeling. The other person made the situation, but not me, not, but not my feeling. The feeling was my decision. Now with this in step five, we are trying to observe the basis for the decision that I am making for my feeling. So is my feeling based on right understanding or based on some assumption? So this is something that we are trying to observe now through various situations. My mother is calling me, I have one kind of feeling. My mother-in-law is calling me, I have another kind of feeling. My mother is giving me some advice, I have one kind of feeling. My mother-in-law is giving some advice, I have another kind of feeling. Yes, it may be the case that my mother has one kind of feeling for me. My mother-in-law has another kind of feeling for me. But if I am getting disturbed, it means there is something wrong with my you know, part also. Similarly, when a friend is you know, talking to me, I have one kind of feeling. Somebody who is, competes, who is trying to compete with me is talking to me, I have another kind of feeling. Right? In my own family, I can see that... You know, while interacting with different people, I may have different kind of feelings. And I might be nurturing those kinds of feelings, right? In place of evaluating my feeling and transforming my feeling, I might have been nurturing that kind of feeling. For example, I have some complaint about my mother-in-law and then whenever I meet my friend, I start complaining about my mother-in-law, finding faults with her. I do not do the same thing with my mother, but I do this with my mother-in-law. Now, why is it happening? I may have complained about one dean or director. I may not have the same thing with another one. And whenever we meet, we start you know, talking in terms of complaints about the other. And it may be the case that we start relishing it also at times. But And I might simply ignore all this. I chatted with a friend for about a half an hour complaining about someone. And I could not simply observe my feeling inside. Later, when I get reminded, then I feel that, yes, it was not the right thing to do. But I did it. And I'm completely unaware of myself. So we might be going through all this in a day. You know? This overlooking my conduct, my thought, my feeling is a common kind of mistake. If I start making note of all the instances when I overlook, that is also very helpful. That is also uh, enrich your observation further. Nice. So good morning, sir. Good morning to all. Good morning. Sir, uh, uh, during the uh, observation of um, uh, the feeling, uh, the first part of uh, uh, exercise one. So recently, uh, I could able to observe that uh, or it is uh, observe uh, to be as a correct or wrong, I don't know. The actual thing is I could able to observe two different feelings like for example if uh, feeling of opposition and uh, uh, feeling of uh, uh, doubt on one's uh, intention intention is it possible uh, that at a, at a time uh, there are two different feelings will arise or it is the manifestation of the first feeling uh, which has arised as an uh, expectation imagination and thought sir so the example that you gave, if you have doubt on intention, that's why you are having feeling of opposition. Okay, sir. In this particular case. But yes, you may have a mixed feeling. Okay, sir. You know? Thank you, sir. Yeah. For example, you are expecting one kind of behavior from someone and you did not fulfill it. So whenever you look at this lack of fulfillment, you have one kind of feeling. But when you look at the situation of the other, you have another kind of feeling. So for example, you ask someone to bring something from the market, and the other person comes, he is totally sweating, and I'm totally tired. And so you feel uh, somewhat uh, empathetic for that person. You feel for the other that, see, this person is so tired, so packed up. Right? But at the same time, the person forgot to bring what you said. So when you get reminded of this part, you do not feel you know, the same way as you were feeling earlier. So this kind of fluctuation may be taking place, quite possible. Thank you, sir. Nice. Any other sharing or question? So what we can do, we can observe for five minutes. 
let us observe it and then we can discuss further. Really nice. So if you have any reflection or any question, you may please raise your hand. There's some message in the chat box also. In connection to the last question for the same event or activity, is it possible to get the mixed feelings? Yes, quite possible. Nurturing feeling means there is some feeling which is not acceptable to me naturally. But in place of evaluating it, I am somewhat trying to you know, multiply it within myself. The situation may not be so bad, but I am making it bad to worse within me, in my own imagination. And I am somewhat helping the feeling of opposition to grow further and further. That is nurturing. Kumar Bhaiya, Namaste. Namaste, Sabi Ko. हाँ मैं ये ऑब्जर्व करता हूँ कि जो फीलिंग्स होती हैं ये थॉट्स के साथ एसोसिएटेड होती हैं जैसे थॉट्स होते हैं वैसी फीलिंग होती है नंबर टू जैसे फीलिंग होती है वैसा थॉट होता है हाँ जो मेरे साथ हो रहा है वो मैं आपके साथ शेयर कर रहा हूँ सेकंडली जब कोई थॉट नहीं होता तो केवल एक फीलिंग होती है फीलिंग ऑफ डिस्कम्फर्ट और फीलिंग ऑफ डिसहारमनी थर्डली एंड मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंटली जब ये फीलिंग ऑफ डिस्कम्फर्ट होती है तो ये ब्रेन में मूव करती है या कहें सेल्फ में मूव करती है अभी तो मैं ब्रेन और सेल्फ को अलग अलग नहीं देख पा रहा हूँ तो जो मैं फील करता हूँ ये मूव करती है ये एक, एक जगह रुकती नहीं है ये डिफरेंट डिफरेंट पार्ट में मूव करती है और जहाँ जहाँ मूव करती है वहाँ फीलिंग ऑफ डिस्कम्फर्ट होती है भैया <laughs> और लेट मी रिस्पॉन्ड इन इंग्लिश श्योर श्योर नो इश्यू so only thing that you have to do is to observe your feeling more closely observe your imagination so we have to still work on step 1 now what does this moving mean that the thought keeps moving in the self so basically i am having some feeling right this feeling is driving my thoughts in my thoughts i can see the contradiction at the level of feeling when i observe i can see whether it is naturally acceptable to me or not now when you feel that there is some feeling but no thought try to look at it more closely when you are observing also this particular thing then you are thinking something you are analyzing something isn't it you are trying to make out the feeling so look at it more closely only thing i'll say that you have to go into step 1 and you know do it somewhat more uh, seriously that will help you observe the feeling and the thought better it may be the case that at times the thoughts trigger my feeling but one when the once the feeling is triggered then it keeps on generating thoughts inside me so i looked at something outside and i got the feeling of hatred for some person who is misbehaving with someone right now the sensation came to me it triggered some thought it triggered some feeling now when i have this feeling of hatred even when the situation is gone i'm just thinking about it or even if i'm not thinking about it it has changed the whole kind of imagination inside me so i am looking at things with a feeling of hatred so that is there so the feeling may get triggered by some thought but once the feeling is there it keeps on generating thoughts inside me to bhai lagta hai hamare sanskari aise ho gaye and see like we are conditioned to think in some particular way like assuming myself to be the body assuming some source of happiness outside to be the only source for happiness so things like that are there but the more we observe we are able to see the source of happiness inside we are able to see that i am not the body we are able to see how the feelings guide our thoughts and how the feelings can be transformed so the conditioning are there always there we start with conditioning even when knowing is not there assuming is taking place and those assumptions those assumptions once continued for a long time become our deep sanskars so that is there that is there with every human being only that i have to start questioning them when i start questioning them i get i am able to evaluate them and i am able to get, see the reality i am able to know the reality okay yeah thanks and, Yeah. Another question is there. Whenever we are in feeling of opposition, shall I conclude that some assumption is working behind that? Yes. So try to ask yourself why are you feeling opposed. See this questioning of why 
very important when you are doing some scientific exploration then also it is important when you are investigating into yourself then also it is important why do i get this thought why do i get this feeling why do i assume like this ask yourself this what and why are both very important why lets me look into the purpose what lets me look into the reality as it is nice what is really happening in me 24 by 7 related to feelings nurturing rejecting accepting or evaluating yes so you have feeling inside you every moment now it may be the case that it is some ill feeling and we may be nurturing it for example i have some feeling of revenge i have a deep feeling of opposition for someone okay and now that is getting into revenge and i'm always thinking on on that line on that feeling of revenge i'm nurturing that feeling isn't it i may be developing a whole team with that feeling of opposition that is quite possible ji we yeah, will go to the content now okay so i think this is connected with the previous slide i'll just read it where can we go to the previous slide so let us take the example of my feeling towards some other human being if i have right understanding about human being about human human relationship that is i have understood the human being i have understood myself as a human being the other as a human being then i will have feeling of relationship for everyone this feeling is naturally acceptable to me and with this feeling <clears throat> i am in a state of harmony and happiness when i decide my feeling the thought on the basis of right understanding i am able to decide in favor of a feeling that is naturally acceptable to me that is natural to me i remain comfortable in harmony in a state of happiness within g next slide here on the other hand if i do not have the right understanding about human human relationship that is i have not understood the human being not understood myself as a human being the other as a human being then i'll go by some assumption about human being about myself about the other therefore my feeling will depend upon my assumptions suppose i assume that human being has to be evaluated on the basis of sector class then i may have feeling of relationship for one belonging to my sector class and feeling of opposition for one belong to a different sector of class now this is just an example when we are talking about mother and mother in law a similar thing may hold true someone belonging to my own family i have one kind of feeling someone belonging to in laws i have another kind of feeling someone belonging to my own region i have one kind of feeling someone belonging to the other region i have another kind of feeling so i may be carrying so many and you know, assumptions inside me sense of belongingness to some sense of resentment to some other sense of relationship with some sense of opposition to some other this may quite happen so when i decide my feeling thought on the basis of assumption my preconditionings it is not definite which feeling i'll decide to have a feeling that is naturally acceptable to me or a feeling that is otherwise so my state remains indefinite comfortable or uncomfortable in harmony or in contradiction in a state of happiness or unhappiness so now i can see the need for ensuring that understanding i can see the need for ensuring that understanding in completeness unless i understand the reality completely i will carrying some assumption within and that assumption will keep on triggering unhappiness in me so presently if you see we are not even sometimes able to imagine what continuity of happiness means so only that we feel that if the unfavorable things are gone i am going to be happy continuity but it's not the case if i have not been able to see the reality as it is in completeness i can always see doubts inside me apprehension and fear inside me insecurity inside me because something is missing in my understanding which i have not come to understand and the whole reality the whole existence is the is to be understood is to be seen as it is so the whole task ahead the good thing is that the more you are able to observe and work for it you feel more empowered from within your confidence level grows your assurance in relationships grows right the influences that you are getting from outside goes down you have more clear vision about yourself your family your life this is the society around the world the whole existence and it's very important that whenever we get time we start pondering over this we start exploring into this we start questioning this whatever purpose we are getting and what what is the 
what is the meaning of this particular word you know why is it being said like this what does actually mean we can observe so many things so this is an important task in, in step 5 we are able to see the need for right understanding ji next side we are from this i can see the need for right understanding and the need for deciding my feeling thought on the basis of right understanding if i am able to do this then i will always have a natural feeling and with that i will be in a state of harmony and happiness every moment independent of whether things outside are fine or not fine so there is a need for right understanding right understanding of all that i am related to all that i live with since i am related to the whole nature the existence therefore i need to understand the whole nature the existence and i also need to decide what feelings are natural naturally acceptable to me in relationship to the human being as well as the rest of nature so i start feeling the need for this now when we discuss in the workshop in the very first session that there is a need for right understanding and right understanding comes at the first priority we all agree to that but within me and i, I have to still see whether i have been able to place right understanding at the first priority in my life many times in a day we see that the priority shifts we are not able to relate our practical life the day to day life with right understanding and generally we are dictated by the norms the assumptions the conditionings and just we feel that this is okay to go ahead ji namaste bhaiya my voice is audible yeah clearly audible okay uh, in the previous session uh, the previous slide so you have asked about mother and mother and mother in law so i used to prefer both as equal importance and uh, even though if i used to shout both of them uh, regarding the health so if they won't take care of their health or some sort of uh, skipping of food so i used to shout to both of them i i give equal importance for them so that is no problem in my home so by but, but i have some sort of uh, uh, i just want to question that uh, answer i i want to answer from you sir so that is a uh, uh if somebody has from outside they are asking me uh, so please do this but i am not uh, interested in that but i have to involve in that situation so what would be i i have involved so i am not internally interested in that but in some situation i have to involve in that situation so what would i have to do and i am not comfortable in that situation so please give me the suggestion yeah. what i have to do if someone is just proposing then you can help the other explorer also first of all i will explore the situation myself that mm -hmm. if i am not interested is it based on some liking or disliking some assumption or is it based on right understanding okay so it may be the case that you know i have some uh -huh. like or dislike for some particular thing mm -hmm. right? and it may not be the right thing also it could be the case ha huh, ha huh. for example someone is visiting me i simply do not have a feeling of relationship with that person so i'm not liking mm -hmm. that situation mm -hmm. and someone is saying that yes this person will be visiting us and staying for two days and i have to get involved but here mm -hmm. the other person may not be at fault right mm -hmm. Meaning that i have developed some kind of opposition some kind of disliking for this person so first of mm -hmm. all i will evaluate myself if i feel that yes and now my feeling is based on natural acceptance mm -hmm. and the situation is not uh, fit for my participation and then mm -hmm. i will discuss with the other mm -hmm. that according to me this is not okay and this should not be there for example someone visiting my house is okay but if some people are coming and they are going to drink in the house mm -hmm. like, Hmm. It's simply not okay. I'll say that no, this person whenever he comes, he drinks, and this is not hmm. good. It affects hmm. our children also. So kindly avoid this. Hmm. Hmm. And you simply say to the other, right? Hmm. Or hmm. you can also get in dialogue that what do you feel? Is this okay for our family? Will our children hmm. not get the wrong kind of sanskar when people are coming and drinking here? So I'm giving just hmm. an example. So first hmm. of all, I will let myself. I will try to see for myself whether. my feeling is right or not mm -hmm. whether my feeling is guided by right understanding or not mm -hmm. right when i have okay, done this then i 
डिस्कस विद या हां हां ओके भाई बोथ द बोथ आर माय फ्रेंड्स इटसेल्फ आई एम जस्ट गिविंग सम एग्जांपल्स सर सो बोथ आर माय फ्रेंड्स बट सम ऑफ देम both likes me so one of them uh, say something and another one will say something but i am into the middle of the person and i i used to have a pleasing personality with them so i am what happens to me i couldn't understand but uh, internally i think that it is not a correct but i have a pleasing personality so i am going for that so that type of mentality should be avoided from me so what kind of suggest you can give for me so again i'll say that you evaluate yourself first hmm 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 have a feeling of relationship with those of with both of them or hmm. you have feeling of position for one and feeling of relationship for the other hmm and hmm. then you can also try to make out how do i complement the other so like when i have a friend i can see the friend does not have right understanding then hmm. how i can help my friend develop right understanding and this is mm-hmm. some program that i can make every moment hmm hmm why is my friendship not based on right understanding this is something that i have to question for myself mm-hmm. why is the friendship based on assumptions hmm hmm and so it may be the case that we make friends based on our conditionings for example you see that if someone likes smoking he will you know make friends with those who smoke and then they will say that okay we are very fast friends so the friendship is dependent upon some taste mm-hmm. of smoking mm-hmm. some mm-hmm. taste of drinking some taste of loose talk so mm-hmm. that is also there so first of all i have to look into my participation my role mm-hmm. i have to develop my and then i have to make a program to develop the other so gradually okay. i can as you are entering into this process self exploration i can transform every relationship of mine even with my hmm. mother and mother in law you know hmm. i suppose hmm. i can start transforming every relationship hmm because hmm. now my role is going to be different hmm okay okay bye thank you bye thank you nice to meet you uh bhaiya namaste namaste sabhi ko uh but yeah okay. i have uh, i just have a, a sharing on this assumptions and the right understanding like uh, i'm in a workshop these days so a uh, lot of uh, uh, people who are attending the workshop are very much known to me so many of the conferences many of the ftps uh, so i have met them so i have observed that earlier they are like definitely in a conference room many of them are sitting we have our own belongings we have the files that is being given to us with a notebook and a pen so each of us is carrying that and so each time uh, people used to go out uh, maybe for a tea break for a bye break whatever so they used to carry all their belongings and particularly with the files they used to write their names and uh, you know they were very possessive about it but eventually i'm seeing like when they are also exposed to all this kind of right understanding right feelings not doubting on the intentions so i see these days that they are very comfortable like they put their uh, uh, like uh, files uh, over there and uh, they are very comfortably they go they have uh, they uh, go for a break and then come back again so they are not uh, very much worried about what will happen to my belongings so uh, my observations went as that this was this were the same people who were so possessive about it and sometimes uh, there was a fight also that is uh, my thing is misplaced and uh, this was my seat and uh, so i was supposed to sit there and all but now as i'm seeing eventually so these uh, things are getting very much pacified everybody is quite comfortable uh, with uh, each other so and they are very uh, much uh, you know compassionate towards each other so these observations uh, like made me to feel that really uh, like when we have this right feelings when we have this we don't uh, assume things and start working on that with all our preconditionings so uh, these kind of positive things also uh, evolved through us so this was uh, what i felt that i should be sharing it to you as you have been always a very good mentor and always been guiding us through this thank you bhaiya nice didi this is there that you can see our evaluation about each other also no it gets transformed as we yes. are into the process of self exploration together we'll see yes. many times that it may be the case for example between husband and wife also they have been living together for years but they could rarely share their feelings 
but when they are sitting together in a workshop a different level of sharing starts that could be there between very friends good. that could be there between brother and sister and and similarly similarly with colleagues also this may be there very true. true very true very true bhai thank you so much namaste bhai namaste ji nice ji bhaiya can you go to the next slide good morning bhaiya ji good morning so bhaiya in step 3 you told one words so overlooking so overlooking means what is the real meaning bhai we got to continuously go to watching our thought this is everything or what is the real I, meaning it means i skip over it i do not observe my feeling okay bhaiya okay so we might have an assumption that i have to observe on certain instances for example when i am interacting with somebody or when i am getting angry getting opposed it's not like that when okay. i observe it when and see further the deep preconditionings because i was somewhat you know passing over these moments without observing so let not any moment pass without my observation okay okay, okay. nice bhai okay thank you bhai thank you so as we had discussed while introducing this content so i am there as a self and i have activities of imagination here the desire you know the thought the expectation and if i am not having the right understanding the feeling is decided mostly on the base of preconditioning or sensation the primary source of the feeling inside and you just keep on observing you become more and more clear that see i have this kind of feeling and it is certainly dictated by some conditioning or some sensation that i can make out you can also make out the way your feeling changes over a span of time okay you can also observe your how your feeling changes during the day over a week you know over a fortnight this is also quite possible you can see certain things happening phenomenally and certain fluctuations taking place due to the interaction from the outside world so depending on the state of the body you know, our feeling sometimes gets dictated when we have some physiochemical changes in the body then also our feeling gets dictated by that so all that you can observe when we have the situation outside changing then also the feeling gets dictated by that so if you try to observe you will observe you know all these kinds of phenomena inside you at the level of feeling and you can see these two sources clearly preconditioning and sensation now what we really want to be is that let all the activities in me get awakened presently the activities of block b1 are not awakened i am not able to see the relationship harmony coexistence and that's how the desires are unguided but when i have these activities awakened then the desire is guided by right understanding it is decided by right understanding so i have the feeling of relationship feeling of harmony feeling of coexistence inside me every moment so i can see that this is going to be accomplished within me by me i only have to set the priority you can also see that earlier when we started exploring we felt that we do not have enough time you know to observe because i am working from 9 to 5 in up i am there on a job either in college or some company where do i have time earlier we felt like that and now when i am coming back home i have so many things to do people are waiting for me to do so many things you know for cooking the food for taking care of the baby for taking care of the house or when i wake up in the morning i have so many things to do so where do i have the time to ensure right understanding to observe myself but as you keep on observing you can see that i can still observe myself between 9 to 5 i can still observe myself while cooking in the house i can still observe myself while taking care of the baby i can still you know observe myself while talking to my family members this is very much possible only that i have not been able to set the priority so i feel that i do not have time in fact if i am fulfilling all my roles and observing myself my observation is going to be much more fruitful because i am not going to get carried away 
by thoughts. If I try to sit in a lonely place and then try to observe, it may be the case that I'm observing for some time and then I'm simply carried away by my thoughts. But when I'm participating all the time and then observing, okay, then my observation remains focused to the reality. So occasionally I may be sitting in a lonely place and observing. That is good. Because if this is not, this has not get set in, has not got set in, you know, this observation while participating, then to develop this kind of competence, I may sit in a lonely place and try to develop that practice of observation. But again, I have to come back to the reality, to the you know, society, to the family, and then I have to keep observing myself while I'm participating. Then it will help me a lot. So ultimately, I have to get to the state which is shown on the top. Presently, I may be in the state which is shown at the bottom, or maybe I am in a state of transition. Okay. So one state is that I am completely unaware, completely living at the level of expectation, just expecting things to happen outside and make me happy. The second possibility, like as I progress further, could be that I am now more active at the level of thought. I am analyzing the situations. I'm comparing various options and I'm trying to settle things within me you know, at the level of thought and trying to make me happy as much as possible. Now, most of us might be here. Okay. Now, from here, I have to get to the state when I can observe my feeling closely and I do not overlook any moment. I am observant all the time, sharply observing my feeling. As I do this, then I evaluate my feeling and then I'm able to awaken the activity of contemplation. Okay, my effort is there to awaken the activity of contemplation. So gradually I'm into this process. So you may be in the transition state also. You know? And I think we all are in the transition state. Uh, if we are attending the morning sessions regularly, participating in the workshops, Many of us even conducting the works of playing major roles in the projects. So we are able to set that priority inside us, isn't it? And that priority is getting set because there is some change at the level of feeling. We cannot do so much voluntarily only by thought. We are not going to make out any money. Nobody is going to you know, name us uh, <laughs> some as some special person. But we are getting that motivation from inside. So certainly something is happening at the level of feeling. We are into that state of transition. Only that I have to ensure the right feeling in me in continuity. That is all that is required to be done. We are next slide, please. So if you look at the assignment for step five, this is something that we have been doing in pieces. So whenever you observe that you are having the thought of another person in your imagination, observe your feeling for this other person. How did you decide this feeling? Was it based on right understanding or on some assumption in the absence of right understanding? Reflect on your interaction with this person. How was your feeling towards this person during the interaction? Reflect on your feeling towards this person when he or she misbehaves with you, disturbs or irritates you. How are you deciding your feeling towards this person now? Is your feeling based on right understanding or on some assumption in the absence of right understanding? If your feeling is based on natural acceptance, you will have the right feeling for the other and you will be comfortable within. And the feeling will be definite. If the feeling within is changing or is making you uncomfortable, there's a need for having the right understanding. So are you comfortable or uncomfortable inside? Can you take a fresh look at the occurrence just as it happened without attaching meaning to it, without any preconditioning? but rather on the basis of your natural acceptance with a feeling of relationship. So do it quite productive, quite useful. You have to do it consistently. In the meantime, let me look at some reflections which have come in the chat box. So Gurpal ji has read some observation here. I am really struggling to see feelings within. If not nurturing feeling, then what else I may be doing 24 by 7? how I can investigate more about feelings. For example, right now, I can't find anything related to a feeling in myself. Yes, so that may be there. That may be there. So if I'll only say that, observe. So if you are just trying to observe while attending the morning session or for some time in the day, this may happen. But gradually, we'll also 
start feeling what this observation means. Maybe we are trying to observe at the level of thought. We are trying to decide that I have to do this. I am trying to decide that I have to, I have to do this. But I may not be observing it naturally. So it's just that you keep on doing this, keep on practicing. Okay. Some moments will come when you will get a glimpse of yourself as a pure observer. And that will still instill some confidence also that yes, this is what I intended to do and I am doing it right now. So that will also further motivate you. Ji, any other question or reflection? So we'll be doing this assignment. You know, somewhat we have been doing this partly earlier also. But you are able to get the gist of it that essentially I have to make out my own assumptions. I have to make out the basis for my feelings. What makes me feel bad? What makes me feel sad? What makes me feel, what makes me feel anxious? What makes me feel excited? What makes me feel related? What makes me feel opposed? What is that inside me? It is there inside me, right? And it is triggering so many things inside me. And I'm not aware of that. From where did it come? And how come I am myself storing all this inside me without being aware? So these are you know, some important questions that I have to ask myself. Then you will get to observe so many things inside you. Right? You can see the whole journey of the self. I can also make out the phenomena by which I develop some assumptions inside me. What we are trying to do you know, as a very simple process is something that has been tried upon for a long time, particularly in the West, if you see the whole Western psychology, they have been trying to make out how people get conditioned. And there are so many theories propounded to explain how people get conditioned. Right? And you will see that they are mostly looking at the expression part. They are mostly looking at the uh, unhealthy part in our conduct or character. Not all, but still, you can see a lot of that. Now, we are trying to do the same thing very naturally by self-observation. So, we'll see that through this whole process, we are also taking a shift in our whole psychology. And if it goes to academics, right, if we are able to develop this process in academics, it will transform the whole way of looking at things by the people. Today, we'll see that more and more students are joining the courses on psychology because there's a more need for uh, psychological counseling, psychiatric treatment, and things like that. And they might be missing the core point. Many times I have seen that while people are counseling, and the people, they are not also able to talk about natural acceptance. Now, I'll see a major shift in the psychology that is taking place here. By putting the natural acceptance at the core, we are trying to observe so many things inside us and transform us. So, as our research, if you see, a major kind of breakthrough is taking place. If you are able to establish this process of self-observation on the base of natural acceptance and transform the conduct of a human being, okay, we have accomplished a big thing, which people have been trying to do in academics for a long time. So, do this step five. You know, we'll see the whole way we get conditioned uh, gets explored in this step. Nice. So I'll sum it up now because it is time now.